Um, hello, I think there's Osman Abdi online. Um, I think I will wait for the other students for another two minutes and then we'll start the class. Um, but uh, before that, yes, hello. Hello, Osman, how are you doing? Okay, great. Okay, I'll admit Ibn uh, Hassanin. So welcome to uh, master, I, I think uh, you're, I mean, I cannot hear you because uh, you have muted your mic. Oh, of course, sorry, I have muted my mic. Yeah, uh, good to see you. Same here. It's a pleasure. It's a pleasure yeah. uh, teaching you all the subject, uh, monitoring and evaluation of projects. It's an interesting subject. And I believe that you already had a teacher who had uh, taught you earlier and you have already completed two chapters, right? You completed only two chapters. So today we are going to keep it light. And uh, once again, welcome to my class. And uh, we believe that we are going to uh, simplify the subject and uh, we are going to teach you in the most simplest manner. And um, we are going to pulverize the subject. You know, we are going to break it into bits and come up with, you know, a simple explanation so that uh, more than you by hearting it, you know, you just understand the concept even in the, you know, with a practical point of view that you're able to really implement at work. So that is what our aim is for this class, that you know, we have a practical approach towards the subject rather than just mere theoretical or you know, having um, a lot of words into it. So let's, let me just give you for this class just a little bit of introduction because I believe you already learned this subject, right? I believe you already had two classes. You already finished chapter one and chapter two with your other lecturer there and she has already taught you. So just a bit of revision for this class as an introduction and in the next class we'll move on towards the third chapter and towards the details of monitoring and evaluation. So we, I think we'll begin with what is the purpose of monitoring and evaluation. I'm sure you already learned what is the purpose. The purpose of monitoring is basically to track the progress of the project. That's the purpose of monitoring, to track the progress of the project and to see that in case there are any problems, they would nip the problem in the bud and they would address the problem, they would solve the problem. And so as to not to hamper the outcome of the project, not to hamper the, uh, you know, the, the delivery of the project, rather deliverables should not be, uh, okay, there's another person joining in the five. I just admit her for him. I don't know. So um, yeah, so I was talking about the purpose of monitoring. That is the purpose is for tracking so that the deliverables are not effective. Now, what is the purpose of evaluation? Now, evaluation again, the purpose of it is also it is a tool to check how the uh, the what is the outcome and how they will evaluate the outcome and they will check and see whether the what is now delivered or now in the course of delivery whether again I'm, I am sorry just there are two more people entering the class okay whether uh, you know the deliverables which are there they are up to the market up to the, uh, the you know they would measure it against the scope of delivery and whether it is aligned to what has been agreed earlier in the contract i'm sure you know that every project normally is uh, you know, it revolves around the terms and conditions that are mentioned in a project contract. Who are the parties in a project? Of course, there will be a person called as the employer. Now, of course, there is different type of projects. There are private projects, public projects, PPE projects. That is, uh, there is a PPE project is public and private enterprise projects where the government joins hands with, you know, private enterprise or, you know, the other companies from the private sector, they join hands for especially infrastructural projects. PPA projects at present are in vogue. I mean, it is like, uh, you, especially infrastructure projects are going on a lot across 
every country where the infrastructure is being built and every country is in the pursuit of you know advancement so ppe projects are like you know just you can hear about it everywhere and it's all around you like construction of bridges construction of uh, new airports or revamping of the present airports and construction of new colleges universities just basically it is about infrastructural projects or even uh, you know public private enterprise they join together to build a new highway or new uh, or the road system or to develop some uh, you know uh, say uh, some marine uh, routes or you know to develop a new seaport so these are all PPE projects, like you have even airport projects, like, uh, you know, for airport projects, you, you, I'm sure you understand, apart from what we see normally, it's just the runway and the aircraft. So there is something more to this, more than the runway, more than the aircraft, there are other systems that have to be, uh, you know, set up in an airport, you know, for example, there is um, FOD, that is uh, detectors. You know, uh, you know, there is the detecting system in case there is some obstruction at, uh, at, in the in the runway. So there is detectors. There is so a number of systems are there. There is weather systems which are involved. So for all this, you know, uh, you know, there are projects that are that normally govern the the you know the establishment of all these systems around everywhere. In fact, wherever you go, you would see systems coming up. And projects, it could be even small projects, it could be even one man project. What I was talking about earlier is PPE, that is public private enterprise. But then apart from that, you have one man project, it could be a small project, it could be a, just a, a, you know, a small project which could be handled by four or five people, it could be just setting up of, uh, you know, computer systems in a, in a college or in a, in, a, in a school, or, you know, it could be a small project of, uh, you know, which would involve, say, around 15 people, um, uh, including the workforce, and is, you know, setting up of, um, say, washrooms uh, in, a, in, in any of uh, a rural, uh, you know, school or a, a, a rural uh, college, which is there. So there can be small projects. They can be huge projects. Infrastructural projects are huge in nature. So depending upon the type of project and the, the, the length, the period of project, there will be different milestones that has to be established. What are milestones? Okay, like the first stage would be uh, like, you know, the first milestone. It depends upon what type of project it is. What is the technical aspect of the project, for example? Okay, for example, uh, if I just give you a simple example of setting up of computer system, first thing would be, okay, um, uh, you know they would bring the uh, they would bring the the raw materials raw materials in the sense like the computer systems then the next stage would be they would set up the peripheral system third uh, milestone would be okay they would connect the system the fourth stage milestone would be okay now there is testing of the system the next system would be the next stage would be probably again commissioning of it and then finally will be delivery depending on uh, like what type of project it is so there are different milestones that needs to be achieved just to you know make you understand in the most simplest uh, part of it not going into even a lot of technical details so every project as you understand um, uh, forget about project even in our own lives the little things that you do even what you are studying, it needs to be monitored. That's the reason you're being given assignments just to check like how far have you understood and those assignments carry marks. Are you understanding me? And then there is the evaluation, say the final evaluation. So even the little things in life, or whatever we go through, you know, we monitor it, we evaluate it. Likewise, even in projects, in commercial projects, there is monitoring and there is evaluation. What is required in you know, project management is laconic monitoring and prudent evaluation. That is proper monitoring, which is an ongoing process, which is a continuous process during the project. And evaluation comes towards the end of the project. And it is a prudent evaluation. That is, you come to the right conclusion, you evaluate and see whether it has really met the scope or not. So these are some of the, uh, like, you know, uh, a little, uh, you know, a little bit, in, uh, these are some of the um, 
important aspects that you just need to remember just keep it here in your mind and you need to understand the uh, you know the overall scenario of how projects go on and of course by now i think you already know what are uh, you know the important aspects in a project apart from what i've already told you one would be of course the input that is the raw materials the other thing would be some materials which would be uh, some uh, you know uh, or the activities after the input would be the activities you bring something you bring the materials and after that you have to act upon those materials right suppose i i give you the example of setting up the it system in a college or a school what you would do uh, you know what what do you think would happen there there would be some materials you know the computer systems would be brought the other peripheral systems will be brought then what do they do they don't keep quiet the next stage they want to is to uh, you know to act upon the, what is already there that is there is an input then there is uh, acting upon that input that is the, the activities then there is the output that is they already set up the system and then they go on to study like what is the outcome of it and what is the impact of it like whether it is working well or not so that is the impact then then there is of course the commissioning stage where they, you know there is overall testing and then after that would be after the, you know after the commissioning stage would be whether the project is ready for delivery now apart from that now i've just given you a little bit of introduction of what really happens in the project now in any project now apart from that is of course the payment system payment system also plays a very important role of course every project like normally is uh, like when you hire contractors or subcontractors uh, uh, it, it, the projects normally don't work as normal business like selling of goods or just uh, giving services and you know uh, receiving uh, you know consideration or amount for the or fees or whatever you call it for the services but project is a, a business but it is it is at a different level because it it normally goes on for a particular period of time depending upon what type of project it is payments may be made as and how the project is you know being set up and as per the milestones so having thus set the perspective, let us now go to our slides and see what is a project just in the theoretical form. Now that you already understood just generally what it is, let us now go and check what even your textbook says a little bit about it and how we have, uh, you know, how the, what the slides say about it, what is a project and just will slowly move into the purpose of monitoring and evaluation. And then for the next class, we'll go into the details of monitoring and evaluation. If you have any questions, feel free to ask me at the end of the class. And in case there is something that you really want to tell me while the class is on, you can just raise your hands and I'm ready to address that, whatever is in your mind. Uh, before we move further, I, I understand that uh, you already are aware that attendance carries marks and every class I'll be taking attendance. Next is uh, you will have to be on time at 8 sharp, 8 a.m. And um, yet another thing is uh, there will be buffering time of five minutes. That is, I will begin the class by 8.05 or 8.06, just giving an opportunity for the other students to join in. They can join in even at 8.15. That is, again, again the next stage of buffering will be up to 8.15. After 8.15, attendance would not be granted. However, you will be admitted in the class. Okay? I think that is justified enough. So that you don't miss out, but you will not be granted attendance. And if you need attendance because it carries marks, so then you'll have to be here on time. Okay, now we will go to the fundamentals the introduction since you've already learned. So we'll just touch upon every aspect, uh, like whatever you have learned by now and whatever is important basically. So monitoring and evaluation is a sequel known of any organized structure. That is, it, that means it has to be there. It is, it, it is a very important aspect of any organized structure. So laconic monitoring and prudent evaluation are the key of success of any project or assignment. Simply speaking, okay, there has to be prudent evaluation, laconic monitoring, for which is actually the key to the success of any project or assignment. 
why why are we talking that it is an important tool for gathering uh, you know supervised information and evaluation that is concerned with assessing the progress and advising solution why why are we saying that it is important it is just to understand the progress of the project or assignment in whatever sphere it is because it's very necessary that we understand how the project is evolving and how it is progressing it's very important that we understand that because the moment we know that there is some uh, you know kind of a glitch or a problem immediately it is addressed and so that the main aim is that and it has to be an on time delivery because i want you to understand here because it is not really a management aspect entirely but it's also a legal aspect here the legal aspect which is not mentioned in your slide which may not be mentioned in your textbook so i just want you to understand the practical part of it that if the projects are not delivered on time there is something kind of a delay penalty that is paid if you want to write down you can write it down there is something called as delay penalty now suppose it is a like you know projects or even construction projects for example, or PPE, they are actually governed by something called as FIDIC, F-I-D-I-C, FIDIC. Those are FIDIC laws. Under FIDIC laws, you have different books of law, uh, FIDIC rules, that is red book, white book. So they give a number of rules and regulations uh, with respect to how a project should move on in the uh, with the legal aspect. For example, there is a delay in delivery of project. So there they would, uh, if there is delay, then the one who delays a project, say now the subcontractor is delaying the project. So the subcontractor would there would be a levy upon the subcontractor, a particular delay penalty. Now, write down if you want, okay, there would be a delay penalty. Are you understanding me? There would be a because it's not there anywhere. I'm not mentioned it even in your notes because it's something that came up in my mind now. So delay penalty. This is a practical part of it. Uh, it's good if it is there in your answer, then I will believe that okay, you you are my good student you have really uh, listened to me you have heard whatever i'm teaching so this is something which you may not find easily other than in you know sometimes in law with something which is written articles which are written in the legal perspective or also you would find it in you know under uh, the laws actually so that's the reason you may not find it in the management books easily so you might find it just in a lighter form but what i'm saying is i want you to mention this in your answer in case of projects are delayed in case of projects are delayed, delay penalty would be levied upon either the contractor or the subcontractor or the one who is the cause of the delay, depending upon the contracts that are, you know, that are, uh, you know, that are in, uh, contracts that are executed between the parties. Okay, so just also because of delay penalty or the, the you know the apprehension of the penalties being imposed upon the contractor subcontract or the parties to the contract the where the fear of the employer now the employer is the one i'm not talking about the labor laws or the employment laws i'm talking about laws that govern projects now there would be an employer of a project that is the one who is calling for the tenders and the one for tender of say infrastructure building of an airport for example or not building or let us take a simple example say a building of a particular road system okay so the government would call for tenders so this is how it, the project start the, pub, uh, the infrastructure project starts this is how it starts now the government would call for tenders then there will be different people, private parties, you know, private contractors, subcontractors who will come and you know, uh, you know, respond to the tenders in in sealed envelopes. After that, tenders will be reviewed. See, these are the basics that you need to understand. Tenders will be reviewed. Now, after the tender is reviewed, they would you know award the tender, which is like uh, you know they would review it what is suitable for them. And then when they reward the tender, there would be a contract that would be signed. I'm just going towards the outline, okay? There are many things that go on, but I'm just telling you the outline. There would be a contract that would be signed between the employer, the, the one who has called for the tenders, the one who wants the work to be done. And in my example, it would be the government sector, anything, whatever, if it is the uh, directorate of airports or director of uh, directorate of seaports or you know ministry of uh, education, whatever, whatever. Uh, department or whatever uh you know whatever wing of the government or whatever sector it is so that that person i mean that group would be or that party would be the employer would be called as the employer of the project then now these are the parties in a the project 
uh, just to set the perspective. Now, the employer, now he would award the tender and then there would be a contract that would be signed. What is a contract that is, uh, they would lay down the terms and conditions of how the projects should go on. And uh, they would, uh, you know, there is a legal, they would bind themselves legally to it. And in case there is any problem, then in case there is a breach of contract, then the employer can, you know, sue the, uh, uh, the employer can, uh, you know, sue the contractor. Now, next is, now just imagine a situation. Now there is already a contract. Now the contractor, now he cannot do all the work on his own. So he will hire subcontractors. So maybe a subcontractor means he may contract with somebody else to you know, get raw materials. He may contract with someone else saying that, come, I want you to do this, such and such work for me because my team is not having all the, uh, I'm not having all the hands with me. So I need an additional people with me. So there are different subcontractors. Now this guy, the uh, employer will contract with the subcontract, uh, with the contractor. Contractor will have different subcontractors. Now the question comes, is now these are the parties. Now this is how a project begins and this is how it starts. The wheels of project start. Of course, the first thing is, uh, just before I move further, I've got an intimation here that uh, it might, the, the meeting might get disconnected in 10 minutes, but in case it gets disconnected, as always in all my other classes, please join back. We are going to continue with the class, okay? Please join back in case we get disconnected. Okay, now coming back to the project part of it. Now, uh, yeah, I was at the point of employers and uh, the contractors. Now, the fear is, now you know the parties. Now, the fear is, suppose if the contractor is not able to deliver what he has contracted with the employer. For that, he makes a provision for himself with, along with the other clauses in the contract, which I'll not go into the detail. There'll be a provision of, you know, in case you delay, I will impose a delay penalty. Now this delay penalty, the, of course, the percentage of it may vary from you know country to country, place to place. It somewhere varies between one person to ten percent, and it depends how they you know how they calculate it. It's a law; it comes under the laws, and uh, normally under FIDIC, it's around you know one to three percent. It depends, however, what type of project and what is understanding between the parties. So they would say that okay, I would levy uh, say around one percent delay penalty and so on. Now this contractor. Would certainly not want a delay penalty, right? Who would want a penalty? We would want a profit. We would want to make profit over a project. Already we are investing in the project. So I need a profit. I don't want a penalty. That's a liability. That's an expenditure for me. So now what would happen is to avoid the penalty, this guy will be very sharp enough. And he will say, let me monitor the project. Who? The contractor. Same thing. Now the contractor, what he will do? Okay, I am I'm wise enough. I'm smart enough. I'm not going to create any problems. So now, what if the other subcontractors that he has hired to help him to finish the project for the employer or the main uh, employer, what would happen there? So he's worried about that. So he impose the same clause there, delay penalty for all the other people. So now all are now uh, like, you know, at the edge of the sword saying that if I, if I delay without any valid reason, without any reasonable cause, I mean, it depends, like, you know, you draft a clause in that manner. So without any reasonable cause, then I would, there would be a delay penalty given to me. So I better monitor my project. So this is the role monitoring plays one of the rules apart from of course proper deliver uh, uh, deliverables or you know proper delivery of the project in simple terms uh, uh, apart from that everybody wants to avoid a penalty everybody wants to have a good image in business everybody wants to do things in a way that how they have contracted it has to be uh, you know delivered so this is one of the reasons so this is the kind of role that monitoring place that they monitor in case of any problem immediately they will inform the employer in me immediately the the one with whom they contracted for whom they're working on for the project immediately they would inform that person saying that see there is a delay cause because of such and such a reason and the delay is not because of me that so that they would avoid the penalty but the the reason they are giving should be reasonable and then it would be granted in case it's not reasonable then of course it depends upon the understanding the parties will not go into the details of that 
But what I'm trying to say and make you understand here is that to avoid penalties and to, you know, to assure a proper and effective delivery of the project, monitoring plays a very important role. And evaluation plays a very important role to come to a conclusion that they have delivered within the scope and all the other parameters are complied with. Are you understanding? Now let us confine ourselves now to just the management aspect of it, having given you the actual reason also why monitoring is done. Why, why are they so concerned about monitoring? One of the reasons I've given you. Next is uh, confining ourselves to the concept of project monitoring and evaluation. First, we need to understand what is a project. This is, of course, a very basic thing, but it's still I mentioned there because it's necessary. And it's also part of your first chapter, which you've already learned with your other teacher, with your other lecturer. Now, a collaborative enterprise having a purpose and a strategy to accomplish that purpose is a project. That means it's a collaborative effort. Or it's a teamwork. They get together and they, you know, they uh, decide to launch a particular uh, assignment or a project. So it's a collaborative enterprise which has a purpose and a strategy. Now, purpose is what is the goal of the project. Strategy is, of course, how you strategize and how you plan to gain that particular goal or gain the particular purpose. So Project Management Institute in uh, 2017, a guide to the Project Management Body of Knowledge, PMBOK Guide, 6th edition, it defines a project as a temporary endeavor aimed to drive, I want you to remember this definition because it is by PMI, Project Management Institute, and it is a very important definition that you must understand because it is by PMI. And you can quote two, 2017, uh, sixth edition, and the name of the, you know, the, the treaty is there. It defines a project as a temporary endeavor aimed to drive changes in teams, organizations, or, you know, societies. The output of a project is normally a unique product service or the result of what they seek to accomplish. Next is, now here, the Project Management Institute further substantiated, means added on to the term of project. I mean, they tried in one of the, you know, they triatized, they tried to substantiate the term and they added that project refers to any temporary endeavor with a definite beginning and the end. They said, whatever is the endeavor, it is a definite endeavor which has a beginning and the end. It starts and it culminates, it ends. Next is a project may be handled by one person or a group of individuals depending upon the type of project. Next, Mesley Oliver in his triatized project feasibility tools for uncovering points of vulnerability has explained that the term project as consisting concrete and organized effect motivated by a perceived opportunity when facing a problem. So these are the definitions that you can begin with for your answer, uh, where you may feel it's pertinent that you need to mention the meaning of a project just as an introduction. So this is the definition part of it. You can go through it. Then next is every project has a definite beginning and a planned strategic accomplished end. It has uh, you know, a, a life cycle, what we call it as a project life cycle. Every project has a life cycle. That is, when we know there is a beginning and the end, that means there is a cycle. Between beginning and the end, there is something that is happening. So it has a life cycle. Next is, what are the stages in the project life cycle? What are the stages? First is, of course, is the inception of the idea, okay? The first stage would be, of course, the inception of the idea. They get an idea, okay, there is something to be done. So that is a situation analysis stage where they conceive the idea, they identify the need of the project, they develop a project charter. See, I want you to mention certain key terms. They develop a project charter, okay? They have an idea in mind, then they develop a project char charter and they say yes. Then they analyze the situation. Let, let's say, for example, uh, in a remote area, the government of a particular country says, I must establish schools in this area. And especially girls' education has to be really, education for girls has to be really promoted. So they say, now this is an idea. They, they conceive an idea. It's at the very inception stage. Then they project, prepare a project charter. Then they say, okay, which area? Then the situation analysis. They say, okay, which area should I, uh, you know, which area should I build the school? 
Where should I build the school? How? What is the feasibility? The cost part of it, the feasibility, the, you know, whether it is, uh, how far is it from the, the, the residential area or the town or the village or whatever, how far it is, whether it's a right place, whether it's a right, you know, uh, the location should be right where I, where I can set it up. So situation analysis, the need would be studied, the purpose would be studied, the, uh, the possibility, the feasibility would be studied. So this is at the inception stage, the first stage in a project life cycle. Next is you bridge the gap, that is gap analysis. They would foresee and say from the beginning stage towards the towards the achievement say they would they would try to see what might be the probable problems that come up. They would try to bridge the need, uh, the initiation on one hand and accomplishment on the other. So this is gap analysis stage. So the first stage is the inception stage where they conceive the idea and they have a project charter. The next stage is gap analysis stage. The third stage will be project planning stage. Of course, when you conceive the idea, you plan. Without planning, things will not work out appropriately. So the third stage would be the planning stage. This is, again, a very, very important stage. Project planning is a must. Strategizing a project is a must. It has to be done. Like, for example, let us not go into like all the big things of the world. Let us go to the simple thing. Now you have got sought your admission for, uh, you know, this uh, master.